archaeology, astronomy, volcanism and geology, even construction and engineering, and mining. What do they have in common? These fields are related to rocks in some way. And studying these fields require you to understand the nature of rocks as well. Rocks are what formed when the molten planet Earth cooled down 4 billion years ago. From being a hell-like planet, cooling down into a rocky planet containing water as well. From magma being cooled down, now there are hundreds of varieties of rocks formed through various Earth processes. And they are now categorized into three and are now recycled in the planet. What are rocks? What are its identifying characteristics? And how do we group them into three? Igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. That will be the topic for today in Earth and Life Science Rewind. Video reviewers for Earth and Life Science. Senior high school students, I am Teacher Gian and welcome Earth and Life Science Rewind. Video reviewers for Earth and Life Science. In this video reviewer, we will discuss the definition, characteristics, and the three types of rocks. The main objective for this is to classify rocks in igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Let us define rocks first. Rocks are naturally occurring solid formation of minerals, and in that meaning, you can actually see its characteristics. First, it's a mixture of minerals, meaning rocks are made up of two or more minerals. Next is that they can be organic or inorganic. Compared to minerals, which are only inorganic, rocks are organic and inorganic as well. So it can come from any living organism as long as it's a mixture of mineral and it's also natural and solid. So remember its characteristics from the mnemonic MONS, M-O-N-S. So, how about we differentiate minerals from rocks? The differences are, minerals are solely inorganic, meaning they are not related to living organisms, and rocks can be organic. Another one is that, minerals have a definite chemical composition, while rocks are a mixture of minerals. So, in a nutshell, we can say that minerals have definite composition, while rocks are composed of mixed minerals. You can actually see here that this granite has three minerals in its texture. Feldspar, biotite, and amphibole are minerals. So let's try to use your knowledge of characteristics of rock. Is coal a rock? Let's try. It's a mixture of minerals. It can be organic or inorganic, natural and solid. Yes, it is. How about dead corals? Dead corals are a mixture of minerals. They can be organic or inorganic. Um, actually, corals are organic because they are dead corals. They are dead living organisms. They are natural as well, naturally occurring, and they are solid. So yes, dead corals are rocks. They are actually called limestone. Rocks are generally classified by how they form. Are you from molten lava? Did you undergo heat and pressure? Are you compacted in bodies of water? Texture as well? the grain size if they are coarse or fine, and their mineral composition. But among these classifications, petrologists unanimously agree that we should classify rocks on how they are formed. Are you formed from hardened magma or lava? Are you formed by extreme heat and pressure? Are you just solid fragments of other rocks just formed together? And in that, we have the three groups of rocks. We have igneous rocks, which are products of magma and lava being cooled and crystallized. Sedimentary rocks, which are built up of fragments, grains, and sediments. Metamorphic rocks, which are other rocks that underwent extreme heat and pressure. A literal change, meaning metamorphosis, change in its form. Let's start with igneous rocks. All rocks that are igneous are formed from molten material. It can be either magma or lava. Between magma and lava, there are two kinds of igneous rocks. Intrusive meaning the magma never went out of the crust and it cooled underground. The meaning of intrusive is in the inside. Extrusive is when molten material releases outside the crust and forms as a rock. Extrusive means outside. So again, intrusive means inside the crust. It is formed 
Extrusive means outside. The differences between intrusive and extrusive igneous rocks is that in intrusive igneous rocks, they are cooled slowly. So being cooled slowly, they have large crystals and large particle size. Extrusive igneous rocks are usually with pores or bubbles because they are cooled quickly and they have small particle size. Examples of intrusive rocks are pegmatite, gabbro, and granite. You can see that they have large crystals and large particles. And extrusive rocks are these, pumice, basalt, obsidian, and andesite. You can see that they have pores, you know, little holes in there, and they have smaller size of particles. So let us name some igneous rocks and their uses and significance in society. Basalt and gabbro were used as primitive tools in the past. Gabbro and basalt can also be construction material. Granite can be used as construction material for monuments. And obsidian can be used as volcanic glass decorations. Actually, obsidian is an attractive kind of igneous rock. Pumice, and it can be used as your scrubbing rock. Pegmatite can be used as ore for metals. You can see the metals there in pegmatite. So how about sedimentary rocks? From the word sediment, sedimentary rocks are formed through compacting and cementing. So they are compacted as they settled in layers in bodies of water. So they are formed when they are fragmented through weathering and they form layers as they settle down in the bottoms of lakes and oceans. With that, the deposited sediments gather weight. They become heavier and they squeeze themselves together until they become compacted and formed into rocks once again. Sedimentary rocks can be classified into three. Plastic, meaning the accumulation of those sediments and fragments. Organic, meaning it's related to organic living organisms. And chemical, meaning they are formation of chemical substances on the bottom of layers of water bodies. Examples of plastic sedimentary rocks are shale, which are made of sediments very small, clay and silt. Conglomerate, which are made of large sediments and pebbles. And sandstone, which are made of medium sediment, you know, like sand. Shale can be used as bricks in, in construction. And sandstone can be used as decorations and sculptures. Conglomerate can be used as building material, just like shale. Examples of organic sedimentary rocks can be chalk or calcium carbonate. Chalk is what formed when marine fossils are weathered down into small bits. So you can actually find chalk in fossils of marine animals. Coal is an accumulation of buried plant fossils. Believe it or not, the coal that we use for fuel was actually compacted plants and other organic matter. Examples of chemical sedimentary rocks are limestone, mentioned earlier as organic. Limestone can also be chemical because it's definite in its chemical composition. The calcium carbonate can be used in many things, sugar refining, construction, and even manufacturing. Another example is halite meaning rock salt, which is sodium chloride. And you know how we use salt. Unlike igneous, which was magma or lava before, and sedimentary, which was a sediment or a fragment before, metamorphic rocks are already rocks before them. And when these rocks undergo heat and pressure or any of the two, they can change their form into another kind of rock, which is metamorphic. Metamorphic rocks can be classified into their textures, and they are classified into foliated, meaning there are folds and layers of minerals. Usually, they are transformed by pressure. That's why they look like that. They have layers. Non-foliated are without bands. They are just purely homogeneous and usually transformed more by heat. They are seemingly cooked more heat than pressure. I have mentioned earlier that metamorphic rocks were originally rocks already. So they have their own parent rocks, which are the original rocks that underwent extreme heat and pressure. For example, quartzite here is an example of metamorphic rock. Before it was quartzite, it was sandstone. So when sandstone was buried under with heat and pressure, it became a metamorphic rock called quartzite. Same with limestone here. Limestone underwent heat and pressure and became marble. And marble is used for statues, buildings, and even decorative materials. 
before there was a slate as metamorphic rock, it was shale before a sedimentary rock. And slate can be used in buildings, tiles, billiard tables, and even floor. Granite, an igneous rock, can be formed into gneiss with enough heat and pressure. And gneiss can be used as a durable construction material. So how do we classify rocks according to category? Um, what are the key indicators that something is looking like igneous, sedimentary, or metamorphic? Aside from familiarizing their names, get to know the common characteristics of each rock group. Igneous can be rough looking, no layers, non-acidic, and they can have holes. Also, they are volcanic or magma looking or lava looking in origin. Sedimentary rocks can be rounded in shape. They can have layers. They can also have fragments and little parts, and they can be found near bodies of water. Metamorphic rocks are usually fine and smooth, and they have little texture. They can be located in geologic formations or underground because that is where heat and pressure build up. So let's try identifying these if they are igneous, sedimentary, or metamorphic. Marble is located underground, very smooth, and has layers. So which is it? It's a metamorphic rock. Shale is made up of small particles of clay and silt and can be found along rivers and lakes. What is it? It's a sedimentary rock because it's particles, okay? It's made up of many particles. Basalt is rough, fine green, and within magma hotspots and plate boundaries. From the word magma and the rough, it's an igneous rock. So let us summarize our reviewer for today. Rock is a naturally occurring solid formation of minerals and it has these characteristics. Also, it can be divided into three groups, the igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks. So let's test your knowledge. Pause this video and try to answer this five item quiz and resume the video if you want to know the answers next. Video resumes in five, four, three, two, one. Here are the answers for the test your knowledge part. Thank you for watching this video reviewer and I hope that you have refreshed your lessons on this episode, the three kinds of rocks and their properties. I am teacher Guillem de Natalia and see you next time on the next Earth and Life Science Rewind. Video reviewers for Earth and Life Science.